state police catch a man who is accused of kidnapping a woman who he was once in a relationship with. Coming up, we'll explain how a concerned gas station manager helped lead to his arrest. This popular liquor store on campus was broken into twice this morning, and police say by the same person both times. Mixture of sun and clouds out there right now, but I will tell you this, we'll start to see a few rumbles of thunder spark up here in the next few hours. What can you expect out of those? I'll have that coming up. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. A man is in custody this midday in connection to a reported kidnapping in central Kentucky. A clerk at Love's Truck Stop in Madison County says a distressed woman claimed she was being held against her will and begged the clerk to call 911. A short time later, police found the suspect at the Thoroughbred Center in Lexington. WKYT's Mark Barber has the latest on the investigation. And that is our top story at noon. Mark? Good afternoon, Bill. State police say the woman who was kidnapped was being held hostage by someone that she knew. Investigators tell me that she had been in a tumultuous relationship with her captor. We've learned that she had filed an emergency protective order against this man in Clark County before police said he kidnapped her today. Now, state police are not identifying this man. However, we have learned from one of his co-workers that his name is Jeff Rowland. The search for the man began around 7 o'clock this morning when a gas station manager at a truck stop in Madison County called 911, saying a panicked woman had told him that a man was holding her hostage. The distressed woman was inside at the checkout counter. She begged the manager to call 911 without tipping off the man who was waiting outside for her. The manager managed to take down a description of the car and its license plate number before the woman got back in the car and it took off. When investigators found the pair, they were at the Thoroughbred Center in Fayette County. The woman was safe and Roland was arrested. One of his friends tells us he had worked at the Thoroughbred Center for years. When he heard Roland was wanted for kidnapping, he knew it must have been someone close to him. He ain't just going out here and kidnapping, though. It, it's family, I'd say, for sure. Probably family. Yeah. And, you know, he's just going to get the charge. Now, state police say they still do not know at this point what charges this man will be facing exactly. However, they tell me they do know that all of them will be related to kidnapping. Live in Madison County, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. Investigators are telling us they do not know if Roland had a weapon at the time. The owner of a Lexington liquor store says his business was broken into twice this morning by the same man. The first happened around 5 a.m. at Signature Wine and Liquor on South Limestone, and then again around 9 a.m. And that time the suspect was found drinking inside. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain talked with the owner of the store. Michelle? The owner of Signature Wine and Liquor here on South Limestone had quite a wake-up call this morning. His store was broken into twice this morning in the matter of four hours. And those burglaries, police say, were by the same person. The store's owner, T Sound, says someone broke into his liquor store through the glass of the front door around 5.30 this morning. After receiving notification from his alarm company, Sound said he got up and went to the store where he noticed a bottle of liquor was missing. Later, police found the man responsible for the break-in. Sound says he boarded up the broken door and police took the man to a nearby hospital. Then, Sound says within the matter of four hours, he found the same man had broken through the boards he had just put up. Sound, who provided this picture, says this time he found the man on the floor with more cuts on his body. And he says the man had opened up a bottle of booze. That was the bottle that he had that he was drinking. I say it's just ongoing process with the homeless people around this area that all our businesses fed up. Sound says there have been too many burglaries to count in his four and a half years in this spot. Now, despite that, he says he has no intentions of moving his business. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Michelle, thank you. And we've just learned from police that Randall McKenney is charged with third degree burglary. Two people who found a body in a western Kentucky creek earlier this week are now speaking out about the discovery. Kim Colston and Doug McKenna found the body inside a toolbox floating in Short Creek in Grayson County on Tuesday night. WKYT's Rebecca Smith is at our live desk with their reaction. Rebecca? The two people who found the body are haunted by the find. Kim Colston notified authorities after she and Doug McKenna found the body inside a toolbox floating in Short Creek Tuesday night. Investigators are still not sure who the victim is or how he died. Police say the toolbox is similar to one that you find in the back of a truck. 
People living in the area describe the creek as a normally quiet and secluded area. McKenna has, has had a hard time sleeping since making the discovery. I told her before we went, I, I just, said, I don't want to go down there and find no dead body. Especially this close to home. Police say the body has been taken to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. More details are expected to be released once the examination is complete. At the live desk, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Rebecca, thank you. The case has been classified as a death investigation at this point. That could change depending on the outcome of the autopsy. Flash flooding remains a threat here in the bluegrass with more showers and storms moving back into the region, dropping heavy amounts of rain. And that rain expected to last through the weekend. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with a look ahead. Micah? Yeah, we're going to at least have that chance of thunderstorms this afternoon, Friday afternoon, and Saturday. Okay, so we got three consecutive days of at least a chance. Now, is it a widespread chance? Absolutely not. Look at that forming back towards 65. And this model's picking up on this very well. And you can look across the region and see that there's no widespread rain for today. However, these things are slow movers. They're popping up back towards 65 and just not moving much, which tells me this. You can have two thunderstorms out there over toward the west like you're seeing there on that particular model at 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. You could have those and just not move, and that could cause that flash flooding threat. And that's why we've been talking about it all morning, that you don't really have to have widespread rain to have flash flooding with the grounds the way we have it. So we're going to be going over that. I'm going to show you hour by hour, not just today. We've already gone through that. But off into your Friday, Saturday, we've got big plans for the weekend for the kids to go back to school, and we'll have that forecast coming up. Micah, thank you. There's frustration among some Fayette County school parents after getting a letter from the district saying they'd have to transfer if they wanted to go to a particular after school program. Kids Club is the only pediatric medical day treatment facility in the county. The director wants Fayette County buses to pick up children from their schools and transport them to the after school program. But the school system sent out a letter saying they would only transport kids from Glendover Elementary since it's in the Kids Club's district. We have children that go to school and they need a safe therapeutic place to be after school. This is a need for them, so we advocate for it. Tonight on WKYT News at 6, you'll meet a nine year old whose parents say they don't know what they'd do without Kids Club, but don't want to move elementary schools. Attorney General Andy Bashir's case against the Scott County Cemetery and an owner there will be returning to court this afternoon. Bashir's office brought a civil lawsuit against the Crestlawn Cemetery back in May, claiming that it took thousands of dollars from customers for grave markers but did not install them. The suit also claims the owner violated Kentucky's Consumer Protection Act by not maintaining the cemetery. Bashir is asking the company to fulfill all of its outstanding obligations or provide refunds and pay civil penalties. That case is to be heard at 1 o'clock. Two of Kentucky's leading Democrats, Attorney General Bashir and Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, are skipping the annual Fancy Farm picnic this weekend in western Kentucky. Both cited family commitments as their reasons. Republican U.S. Senator Rand Paul and his Democratic challenger Jim Gray, the mayor of Lexington, will be squaring off during Saturday's picnic. Other speakers include Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Governor Matt Bevan, and State Senator Ralph Alvarado of Winchester. It's always uh, hot in more ways than one out there. Yes, it is. <laughs> always interesting. You got it. Well, dozens of people in the state capitol are still celebrating this midday after getting free food for a year. That was the call to post at the grand opening of the new Chick-fil-A in Frankfurt. Some people camped out since Tuesday for the chance to win a gift card that's good for 52 free meals. One every week. You got it. All right. Republicans are trying to fan the flames after some recent comments that Donald Trump has made that show that he is slipping in the polls. We'll have the latest from the campaign trail coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, country music group The Band Perry is taking precautions ahead of their trip to Rio for the Summer Olympics. I'll tell you what they jokingly said about protecting themselves next on WKYT. 
Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. Authorities in London are trying to figure out what led to a stabbing spree that left an American woman dead. British authorities say a 19 year old man attacked people at Russell Square near the British Museum. The suspect is now in custody. We've learned he is of Norwegian descent uh, and originally, apparently, of Somali origin. Police say early indications point toward mental health being a significant factor in the case, not radicalization. Five others were injured. One of them was also an American. None of their injuries are considered to be life-threatening. The U.S. government has confirmed the Obama administration secretly arranged a plane delivery of $400 million in cash on the same day Iran released four American prisoners and formally implemented the nuclear deal. President Obama approved the transfer, which was the first payment of a $1.7 billion settlement. While the transaction took place the same day as the release of the four Americans, officials insist it did not constitute a ransom payment. With less than 100 days to go until the election, Donald Trump is moving, some say, in the wrong direction. The latest poll numbers show the Republican nominee losing ground in key battleground states. And there are reports of division within the Republican Party. Greg, uh, Craig Boswell now has the latest on campaign 2016. Donald Trump says reports of chaos within his campaign are completely false. And I have to say, our campaign is doing so nicely. Just this week, Trump has attacked the family of a U.S. Army captain killed in combat, denied Russia's military involvement in Ukraine, said his daughter Ivanka should quit if she was harassed at work, refused to endorse leading Republicans in Congress, and lost the support of other prominent Republicans. It's nobody's ever seen anything like this. It's a one-man band. It is not a real campaign. In the last couple of weeks, he has been remarkably underperforming, uh, and we'll see whether or not he can take a deep breath and, and learn these lessons. Hillary Clinton now has a 10-point lead in a national poll from Fox News. But perhaps what's more troubling for the Trump campaign is what's happening in the swing states. In Florida, Clinton now has a six-point lead over Trump coming out of the Democratic convention. She has a nine-point advantage in Michigan, part of the industrial Midwest, where Trump has poured in a lot of resources. And in New Hampshire, Trump had a two-point lead in May. He's now at a 15-point deficit. We don't plan on winning in August. We plan on winning in November. In another week or so, the polls are going to even out. We always thought that. Meanwhile, Clinton is going after the one area Trump leads her in the polls, the economy, pointing out that the businessman already outsources jobs to make his neckties and other Trump products. Craig Boswell, CBS News, okay. the White House. And Clinton will continue to focus on the economy today while campaigning at an electric company in Las Vegas. That will be this afternoon. Well, a country music group, the band Perry, has some mixed emotions on whether to be worried about the Zika virus while they're in Rio for the Summer Olympics. Neil Perry says he isn't worried, but his sister and lead singer Kimberly Perry joked that the band is going to perform in saran wrap or in beekeepers' outfits just to be safe. The band says they plan to go to the women's gymnastics final, which they say is worth fighting off any mosquito. Team USA chose their song, Live Forever, as their theme, which they will perform for the athletes during the game. Coming up at 1230, we'll explain how the quick actions of a quick-thinking gas station manager helped save a woman who state police say was kidnapped. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Clouds are building in most locations across the region, and that usually means one thing a little rain in the forecast. And we do have a few thunderstorms out and about. I'll tell you this, though, I do have some good news for you. This morning, we had a 60% chance of rain looking for a low pressure system barreling across the state. But the good news is it's kind of just stuck back a little bit. And the good news about that is, is it looks like the best chance of rain now is more of your Louisville to E-Town, E-Town to Bowling Green, not so much for much of our viewing area. Look where these storms are popping up at this moment. It's really across that 65 corridor, at least around that. Storms are popping up. Watch how fast they move. I'm moving that fast, right? They're popping up. They're just kind of staying there. This is kind of like your summertime afternoon. And so what that means for us is this, okay? We got to watch this very closely because this is the type of setup that could lead to some isolated flash flooding spots. See where that's popping up? Look at this high resolution model. 
How on it is that? I mean, that shows you exactly where it's been expected and exactly where it's going to move. It is just not going to move that much. That means my friends over toward BG Parkway, work your way down 64 through the outlet mall, Simpsonville, Shelbyville, go down in Spencer County, Washington County, maybe even Lawrenceburg and Anderson County. That area back west has the best chance of rain for the day. Not the best chance, not just the best chance, but the best chance of some isolated flooded spots because of it just not moving that much. It pops up and just kind of sits there, and that's the problem with this type of setup. So obviously, you're not going to get widespread rain, and obviously, you don't need widespread rain to have some flooding spots. You could still have a storm or two outside, and it still could cause some flooding. But the good news here is, is that actual moisture, the main impact, should stay back toward the west of us today as it looks like it's just kind of slowed down and installed for just the moment. Nonetheless, we go off towards your evening hours, still look for a couple of rumbles here and there. It's just not looking widespread. Most of us, most of us stay dry today, but a few storms will be out there. And then we head off towards your Friday, a storm or two. I don't see a great chance on Friday either as most of us stay dry then. Eastern Kentucky, southeastern Kentucky, the best chance on Friday. Saturday and Sunday. Sunday's going to be great there for the weekend. Saturday, yeah, it's going to be a little iffy. That's when the front actually rolls on through. Lake Cumberland raft up a big, big event, hoping to break a world record with the most rafts out on the water. And uh, hopefully so. But the problem is, some stormers will be out and about. So it's going to be kind of tough to do that. Just know you hear that thunder. You better roll indoors just for a little bit. Just get out of the water for a moment. And that's your best chance of rain in the forecast is on Saturday, guys. Sunday still looks pretty good. And I'm not seeing any problems there on Sunday to finish off the weekend. Maybe. Okay. That'll be nice. Very nice. <laughs> Hold on for that, right? That's right. Keep Thank it you. here now on WKYT Sports on the way. The NBA's Rookie of the Year is giving back to the place that got him started. And the journey has started for the football cats. Dave Baker's next with sports. Checking stocks as we head to break this afternoon. The major market indicators again are pointing upward at midday. Football season has finally come to the Bluegrass. The Wildcats reporting for fall camp today. They'll meet the media tomorrow. This is the best recruiting class Mark Stoops has brought to Lexington. That means plenty of competition, and the newcomers have shown up ready to go. You know, they really seem like they, you know, they just have come in with a purpose, you know, not only in the classroom, but they just seem locked in. Uh, it, it's a good group. But, you know, I like the two running backs. I like Benny and, and, and AJ. Uh, they, 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 they look the part of it, you know, the physical part of it. Uh, not sure mentally yet when everything starts flying and the bullets start coming. Uh, that's going to get a little bit different. They'll, they'll find out. Um, and then, uh, you know, Landon Young, you know, he looks fantastic out there. All those guys that we recruited, I, I feel like on offense, you know, uh, have a chance. And what would a summer in Lexington be without John Calipari's stars returning to campus yesterday? It was the big cat, Carl Anthony Towns, the NBA's rookie of the year, saying money and fame hasn't changed him. And he hopes to someday be the best player on the planet. Town says it started with Calipari, who gives players a chance to reach their goals. I don't think I need to, to tell you guys how good he is at putting players in the NBA. If you want to walk into Joe Craft Gym, I think you'll see that. You know, that's a, that's a fact that no one has to check. That's just a given. So uh, there's no variables when it comes to his ability to make our dreams and aspirations come true. Uh, right, all I worried about when I was in college was making sure that we won as many games as possible and beat as many teams as possible by a lot of points. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, Freddie Maggard of the UK Network getting us set for the opening of camp. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. We'll get you ready for that opening of camp throughout the day as well, guys. But for now, that's a look at sports on your Thursday. All right, Buzz, thank you so much. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. A woman badly injured in a dog attack a year ago is taking legal action. We'll tell you who she's named in her lawsuit. An American woman is killed and five other people injured after a man goes on a stabbing spree in London. I'm Jonathan Vigliotti. I'll have the latest on the attack coming up. Tomorrow's Mega Millions jackpot is $30 million. Saturday's Powerball jackpot is now $52 million.